What's up, Divas and Divos? It's your girl. So today's video, of course, you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So I decided to do it here in my bathroom because I did want to do my makeup. And I felt like, you know what? I'm about to knock two birds out with one fucking stone. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have said that because I do have some products in this video that I want to share with you guys. Because, you know, when I do my makeup, I do have products to show you guys. Also, um... Yes, I do have my wig on, um, and if you guys are interested in this wig, I did make a video of it, not unfortunately making it, but you know, if you want a wig made, you could definitely check me out on my website, which is linked below, but you guys know it's Real Talk Wednesday, so we're going to get into all the good stuff, the juicy, juicy stuff. So before you guys even ask me where did I get the shirt from, because there were some people in like a video that I did wear this in recently. Um, I do clean my clothes, okay? The shirt is actually from Belle Lily. It's not one of the websites that I um, do try on hauls for, but it is like meaning they're not affiliated with them. They're their own website. So I will have a video up this week or uh, maybe next week showing what... Um, they have but it was really cheap um it to take like two weeks to come and it was 10 bucks um and i do like it they come in gray and green and i love camouflage like i seriously love camouflage i'm not really sure why but you can adjust the straps in it so you can just show as much cleavage as you want if you want all the girls to be out then you can let all the girls be out okay i don't really want all the girls to be out but you know what i'm saying so other than that, I really haven't been up to much of anything. I did just have this huge uh, wig sale. It's a synthetic lot sale. In case anybody's like, what is a synthetic wig lot sale? It's just um, a bunch of wigs being sold. So you guys know that I do reviews. Um, and these synthetic wig lot sales are for the synthetic wigs. And I do videos for them. Nine times out of ten, I really don't wear them. Um, I do wear them, like, but I put aside the ones that I want to keep. So the ones that I want to keep, they're not a part of the wig lot sale, okay? And they start looking the same to me after a while. Anyway. So I just keep certain ones that look like all the rest. So anyway, I keep them in this huge bin until I accumulate a lot of them. And then I have a wig sale. But once the bin is not able to close like that, then that's when it's time for a sale. So the wigs are worn for like 10 minutes for a video review. And then I, I brush it out and put it neatly back in its net. I put it neatly back in its wig bag that it came with and with the stock card. All that extra cardboard is not in there. So you'll get like, you get four wigs per lot is lot one through 13 lot lot one two three four you know what i'm saying and it's four weeks you get to choose whichever one you want you purchase it and that's that so and i do show you the pictures of me with the wigs on because i don't want to show you a picture of the wig on the website and it's not the color so i do have the actual pictures of me wearing the wigs and i show you what it looks like on me and each one so each wig lot has a variety of wigs because you get four wigs so i feel like you need four different styles you'll get a wavy one a, maybe a bone straight one a body wave one a really curly one you just get a variety you're not going to get all of four straight four straight ones or you know what i'm saying i try to give you a variety so that way you can wear something different and each lot is 60 bucks it does include shipping and that's about it so i do have those every couple months and i had a huge sale on saturday so that is the reason why i didn't get much sleep i haven't really got much sleep lately for the past like four or five days now only because i've been like really busy making wigs um because of holidays and stuff like that so mm -hmm. and definitely make sure you guys check out my later video today which is a hair tutorial of course um by dysor hair but just just look just watch it for me okay you don't even have to watch the whole thing just watch it for me okay because i feel like my views are going down and i don't know if it's because of the wig videos um because they just get boring to people but just watch it for So anyway, like I was saying, I really haven't been up to anything much. Uh, Christmas shopping, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. Um, oh, yes. A girl will be going back to New York next month in January, okay? I will be there for a week and a half. And um, I'm not visiting anybody but my husband, okay? I know y'all bitches is like your husband, but you divorced. Well, we are divorced, but what that was a mistake. But we are back together. Um, we've been back together for like a long time. So I will be visiting him in uh, January. Um, for a week and a half. He has his own apartment and stuff. So we be on the phone all day long. Well, not all day because he'd be at work, but as soon as he get over work, we be on the phone, okay? And listen, a bitch might be coming back pregnant. Okay, let me come back pregnant because I'm about to get my groove on. No, let me stop. I'm not going to come back pregnant because you guys know, like, I had a partial hysterectomy. However, I can still get pregnant, all right? I can still have kids because I do have all my parts. But I am waiting for this surgery so that I can get rid of my parts 
because those monthly periods are really killing me. Like, um, I know this just went to another situation, but um, I'll just tell you guys real quick. I did get to buy um, the Blasian, I think it's called, whatever you call it, um, uh, Blasian partial hysterectomy last November, okay, last year November, and it was supposed to just make my period stop, not stop, but like be less, I would still be bleeding, but not so bad, because I have fibroids, well, like five months ago, I started getting this pain when my period came, it felt like I was in labor, like seriously, it felt like I was in labor, like I was having labor pains, and it was the worst. I started sweating. I passed out and I couldn't move for like two days. It was so bad. Like hurt. It felt like labor pains all in my front and in my back. So I had to go to a doctor and they just were saying like, you know, you have to get a full hysterectomy because, um, or you have to take like these hormone pills to try to make the fibroids shrink, which you have to take these for six months. And with that time you will go through menopause for six months. And don't nobody want to go through menopause. Like I ain't never been through menopause, but I don't think it's a fun thing. Not the way that the older women, um, not old but older women than me be complaining about it you know i heard no good things about um i never heard nothing good about being through menopause so anyway um i have to wait for that yeah it's a horrible thing when you have to go through so many different women womanly body changes and like i don't know i know i'm not the only one because i've read about women that have gotten their periods every month and they be in such a, a horrible they, they just can't leave the bed so i'd be like in here in a fetal position because there's nothing that i can do and when i go out um it just starts to hurt really bad and i start sweating and i passed out before so for like two to three days i'm like really bad um I can't move. Like for the first two days, I can't move. But like for the third day, I'm just sick still. And that's like the worst thing in the world. So last month, um, for the month of November, I got my, you know, period um, at the beginning of November, like the, around the 10th. And I didn't have any pains. I didn't have none. And I was so happy. Like, okay, you know, trust me, I was very happy because that shit is not one to fuck with. And then like at the very end of the month, um, like around the 28th, it came back again and this time it was like the worst pains ever like it was the same pains like always and i'm trying to figure out why did i get two periods in a month is it because it was like very end of the month it was like it was after thanksgiving i want to say it was like the 28th or the 29th so but that's still kind of early for the last one because the last one came on the 10th either way it was very uncomfortable and um I don't know. I know I'm not the only one. And I, I wonder like if anybody who's watching me has gone through this. And if so, what have you done to make the pain stop? Like I've taken aspirin. I, there's nothing I can do. And like, so if there's somebody that's watching this video and is and understanding what I'm talking about, then please tell me what, what did you do to relieve the pain? Or what did you do to like not have to get a hysterectomy? Because like, I really don't want to go into surgery. And like, so I really want to, because when you get a full hysterectomy, you have to be like on bed rest for like six weeks. Like you can't really do much. And like, I don't really like to be like not able to do anything for too long because I have too much shit to do as it is. So yeah. And I really wanted to try to put it off until my husband came home here because he has to wait for a year to be able to come here um it's a long story i'll tell you guys another time um but um like so when he comes here in a year he'll be home here in a year um but it's like i don't think i could wait that long and i you know it's just very it's a very scary thing to have to be put to sleep to get something to be to go into surgery like that is a scary thing because you don't know whether you're going to wake up from it or not and like i've never had surgery before and i just really well i have the blasion but and i was put to sleep but they just burn you they don't cut you open or anything they just take this scope thing and put it up in your cootie and it burns it or something like that so it wasn't like really surgery like that, but I was put to sleep and, um, but I don't want to be put to sleep and be cut. Even if it is a little incision that says not but, but you're taking out these big body, you're taking out parts. So with the ablation, they don't take out anything, but with a hysterectomy, they take your stuff out. And like, I don't really want to go through that. Like, I just feel like that's really scary. So, you know, I'm really trying to avoid going through that. But anyway, so yeah, like I was saying, back to this. Okay. So like, so yeah, next month I am going to, um, I'm going to New York 
to visit with my husband, okay? And I'm like really excited about that because first of all, I miss him so much. Like seriously, I really miss him. Like, you know, you guys have heard me over the years talk about him. And at first I was like, I was like dumb happy about my divorce. And then I realized like I really wasn't happy because I really did miss him. And like the person that I dated after him, you know, I really tried to not replace my husband, but just to try to, to fill up a void. And I was bored. And then after two weeks of that, I was just like over him. You know what I'm saying? But I really miss him a lot. And I just am excited to see him. And being there a week and a half is probably going to bug me out because a week and a half. Like, I'm going to be so excited. Like, a week and a half? A girl about to get her groove on. Like I said, a bitch going to come back pregnant, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. Like, seriously, I'm, like, really excited. Like, I really cannot wait until next month. For real. So, if y'all don't hear from me for, like, a week and a half, don't think that I'm dead. I'm just in, I'm just, I'm just, um enjoying enjoying myself okay like seriously enjoying myself seriously okay so anyway we're gonna get into this um there was some things that i wanted to show you guys on here now first of all i went to my post office box yesterday and i seen this was in there this is a company called juno and company i really wanted to share this with you guys i can't remember if they emailed me or not but if they didn't so what i really don't care they have um beauty products starting at one dollar okay starting so don't go on there and be like girl you said it was a dollar this stuff is three and four and five dollars it wasn't no dollar i said beauty products starting at one dollar okay starting so i went on their website this morning before i decided to do this video because i didn't want to share with you guys and it was bullshit so they first of all they send you this nice box like i don't really know if everybody gets a box but i probably it depends on what you order it says hello gorgeous <laughs> we're talking to me all right and your stuff is in here well the stuff isn't in here right now because i'm using it but you sent a card and stuff like that like let me tell y'all okay they got some really nice stuff on there like seriously they got some i'm about to do some christmas shopping on there for my daughters and for me okay so they got beauty palettes oh my god they got these really nice eyeshadow palettes three four five six seven eight dollars like some really nice colors okay really nice stuff and so they sent me what did they they sent me um these makeup brushes and this is their juno and company makeup brushes um so i was just using this one um these are really good quality brushes like for real they sent me six of them and i did use this one um because i was doing a makeup look and i looked just now but i didn't really like how it came out so i took it off um and then i was like i'm just gonna do the video with you guys um but they're very good quality brushes like do you guys and they didn't come packaged like that of course i took the stuff off but do you see how good quality they are like they are like this part is metal, but the handles are plastic and they're made so well. So they do say their name on them, Juno and Co. And it also has like the number on the back. So I know this one was $2, this fan brush, but they're not all thin and flimsy. They're really like good quality items. Like for real, I'm so impressed with this um, stuff here. Like really like impressive so i'm not really sure how much each one was individually but um definitely check their website out because these are like great do you guys see that like i like the clarity of this video and then they sent me these beauty blender sponges okay now i don't know if you guys can see this they sent me two of them but they look like they're velour do you guys see that like now you can see if i push and pinch them and you guys know i only use this beauty blender but bitch oh this is so soft, like, oh, butter, baby, butter. So I wet this one, I didn't, I wet it for the video, and it just feels, and it holds the water. So the reason why it's velour is because it will um, allow you to use less product. Like, you know how these ones kind of soak it up, too? I'm going to try this out. We're going to see how it works out. But I'm thinking that these was probably, like, a dollar. Either way, they feel so good. I'm going to have to get one to Taki because... She's probably going to really love this. So definitely check them out. This is their Juno Fusion Sponge, okay? And it came in this cute little box, like, serious. 
I was like so totally impressed, okay? Like so impressed. So you guys know I love Oxley and I do um, get a lot of free stuff from Oxley because you do get free stuff, but in return you do need to do like a makeup video for it and stuff like that. So I did get some really cool stuff this week. So I'm going to share it with you guys. But also I want you guys to know like even if you don't do YouTube videos and you have at least, I think it's like either two to five, I think it's either two or five thousand followers on your Instagram. You can join Oxley and get some free products and just do like you know a little review on Oxley, like post a picture or whatever. They got some really bomb stuff, so I'm telling you guys, make sure you guys check them out because I got Issa Laurent stuff that I, I have um to show you guys in this video, and all the Issa Laurent stuff that I have, like perfume and makeup, came from there for free, okay. For free so first thing I'm gonna do in this video um, before because uh, this is a real talk um, I'm gonna talk about myself because that's what I like to do but before I even talk about myself I'm going to spray my face with some setting spray it's like a primer spray it's a setting spray you can use it for both but it comes in this nice box um, and it is by Gerard Ger Gerard cosmetics and this is the okay, so like I was saying this is the Gerard cosmetics slay all day setting spray they got like a whole bunch of different ones so yes comes in this bottle there's like different scents this is the peach one and it smells so good um this is the peach one like I was saying it smells amazing I've used it it gives you like that dewy look so I'm really into that I don't really want my face to look too um like matte you know what I'm saying because I already have like oily skin so I try to cut I do try to use like matte stuff on my face, but not so much because I don't want to look like I'm dry and stuff. You know, people do say that I look, I had dry skin. I don't really know how she figured that one out, but yeah. Mm. So I'm just going to spray a little bit because of the set of makeup and it smells so good. But other than that, you guys, um, I haven't really been up to much of anything. Um, just been chilling. I have like a lot of videos to pump out, you know, for the holidays and I'm going to... I've already used this, but I'm going to use a little bit more. This is the um, Saint Laurent's um, Blurring Primer. But, um, so yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to go to New York and um, visit him. And, of course, I'm going to see my other son while I'm there and my other grandson. Um, I do want to go to New York City to visit with my mom. So um, I'm hoping that I could get there, too. But, yeah. Um, that's about it. So, you guys, so let's get into this real talk. You guys know if you want to have a real talk about yourself, meaning you got a situation that you need to be handled, then you know you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk, so that way I know it's a real talk situation. And, yeah, we can get into that. If you want to change the names of the people in your email, meaning your name is Tiffany, but you don't want me to know that, or I mean, I might know that, but, you know, you know, you don't want everybody else that's watching to know that. You can always say, you know, I went ahead and I changed the names um, in this email. And other than that, um, let's get into this real talk, you guys. All right, you guys, so I'm going to try to do four only because I'm doing my makeup today. So hopefully my camera doesn't die because I just had to switch the battery and I have three batteries, but I already had to switch two. So I don't really want to be dragging it out. You know what I'm saying? So before I even start reading this, um, I'm going to use this pro palette by this pure pro palette. This is by Etienne Garcia, um, uh, Etienne Gar Ortega, excuse me, Etienne Ortega. And this is the pure pro palette. And I hope I'm saying it right, but I did use this the other day. It comes with this nice mirror mm. and a bunch of colors, neutral colors. You know, I love neutral colors. And I did use it yesterday. So today I'm going to use it again. And the first color I'm going to use is popular. Okay, so you guys know I love like a good transition color. So I'm definitely going to use popular. I'm going to zoom in a little bit after I read. Okay, after I read. So here we go. Hey, April, I got a situation Hey, April, I got a situation here. So I'm just going to get straight to the point. My kid's father is in jail and he's getting out in three years. He's been down for 15 years. Within those years that he's been in jail, we talk, but not too often. Um, but once his mother died, we started talking more. But that's out of me being just kind and keeping it cordial with him. I'm still cool with his family and I hang out with the girls in his family ever so often. 
One evening, someone mentioned how he and I should work things out and think it over, they said. That's what his mom would want. She did always say, you're going to end up with my son. Everyone says it. But we broke up because he was not the man me and my daughters needed. That's another story, but I never gave it thought until that one conversation. For some reason, and um, I, I never gave it any thought until that one conversation, for some reason. And when he talks about it, I always hang up and I never entertain it until now. Why am I having these feelings? After all my failed relationships, I'm starting to think he is whom I'm supposed to be with. What's your advice? Oh, and he married this crazy chick through pen pal. Laugh out loud. Okay, so first of all, do I not do people still do I guess I guess if you're in jail, you do have to do pen pal because I mean they do have email in jail, but um they don't have email for everyone. They only have email for like if you're in the feds and stuff. So is it the feds? Yeah, if you're in federal prison, then you can get email. Okay, so I know that um, me and my husband, we would email each other all the time, okay? And if we weren't on the phone. So, like, okay, so he's been in jail for a while, girl. He's been in there for 12 damn years. Shit. Well, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so I'm going to use this color right here. Um, but, dang, that's, that's like a minute. Um, however, you know something... Like, I can't judge nobody that's been in jail. I can't. And I wouldn't. Because everybody has their reasons of why they go to jail. Everybody has their reasons for what they, why they do things. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't really judge a person. I mean, I mean, I, I would judge somebody if he was going around raping people. Because that's not really a reason to judge somebody. I mean, that's not really a reason to do things. Like, you shouldn't have a reason to rape somebody or be a pedophile. You're just sick in the head. So, those certain people, I mean... I really wouldn't even judge them. I just would stay the hell away from them. I wouldn't even bother with them. Okay. That's just, I just wouldn't even bother with those type of people. Um, but with her, her baby father, her kid's father, you know, she didn't say why he went to jail, but that's not my business. You know what I'm saying? Cause if she wanted me to know that she would have said that. So now she's having these thoughts of her and him getting it back together, working it out. She's thinking, is that who she's supposed to be with or what have you? And, you know, that's because that's what his mother says, and that's what everybody in his family says. And I guess he's saying it too, but then he made, he married this crazy chick through pen pal. So I don't know if they're still communicating, meaning him and the crazy chick. Um, however, he must not be communicating that well with her because he's into, um, you know, my girl here. We're going to call her Tracy. We're just going to name her Tracy. So anyway, um, she want to know my opinion on her situation with her kid's father. All right, so first of all, y'all already know my husband has been to jail um, on numerous occasions, all right, um, for drug trafficking and, you know, drinking, but, you know, stuff like that, those things, you know what I mean? And, I mean, like, what drug trafficking, you know, I'm not condoning it, but people do things for certain reasons, and I'm glad that he's got his head on his shoulders now and he knows better but um that never stopped me from caring about him that never stopped me from loving him that never stopped me from being with him I still cared about him you know I would just constantly keep telling him you know you need to stop doing what you're doing you need to get yourself together you're going to end up going to jail and you know you know sometimes people just don't listen to you because that's just what they do they just sometimes don't listen to you which is unfortunate sometimes they just don't listen and you know after me telling him this on several occasions and stuff you know he ended up going to jail okay unfortunate it's unfortunate but he ended up going to jail um but i was still there as a person and even through like his drinking and stuff you know and trying to get help and stuff like that. I was still there as a person. I'm going to tell you something, you guys. I don't really like this eyeshadow. For some reason, it's not picking up well. Um, yeah, I'm not like like a really big fan of this one right here. So I'm going to just be honest. Because you guys see me, my lids are like barely touched. Um, so I do apologize, Ortega, but I'm not really into your palette. Okay? Um, it's, a, it's, it's nice the way it's put together, the palette, but it's not... It, I'm not getting any color payoff with it. Like, look at my lids. Like, they don't look like they were barely touched. So I'm just going to go into my favorite Morphe palette and use this. So in my opinion, um, 
and that's what I'm doing. I'm doing an honest review. They sent me the products, and I'm going to give an honest review about it. You don't have to be like, oh, I love it. I love it because I don't like it. I just don't like it. So um, I just think, like, for her, you know, you guys talk often, but here's my thing, Tracy. Why are you hanging the phone up when he mentions it? Like, you know, he's mentioning it to you because he want to talk to you about it. Obviously, he has feelings about it. But you say you have all these failed relationships in the past. Okay, like, let's not make him the rebound person. However, when you talk to somebody every day, you do end up getting really close with them. And you start sharing thoughts and feelings. And it's, sometimes it's a lot easier to talk to somebody versus be, like, on the phone versus be in front of them. And that's just unfortunate, but that's just how it is sometimes. It's a lot easier to talk to somebody through the phone then it would be a lot of the times to just see them in person. I know for me, sometimes it's like that. Like certain people, I just rather just deal with you and over the phone than versus seeing you in your face because I just feel like, you know, it's just easier for me to deal with you like that. But you are getting thoughts like, you know, maybe we should be together and what have you and, you know what I mean, how you feel about him. Let me tell you something. You can't go off of what anybody else tells you. OK, if you are feeling this person and you like him and you want to be with him and you guys are sharing like really nice thoughts on the phone or you're having like intimate conversations and y'all feel like y'all could work it out because it would be nice if you guys could work it out because you guys have daughters together, then, you know, that's good. And like you said, he wasn't the man for you and your daughters. That's not what y'all needed. But that was like over 12 years ago. And so people change. And even though he's incarcerated, yeah, people, some people might be like, oh, well, he's changed because he's incarcerated. How do you know he might get out and be the same person? But how do you know that he won't get out? The, how do you know when he do get out that he won't be the same person? Maybe he's somebody different. And you know what I'm saying? You always got to give a person the benefit of the doubt, okay? Especially if it's somebody that you're used to or somebody that you um know really well or that you've been with for a time period. Period, then you always got to give them the benefit of the doubt. And that's what I try to do. Okay. So now for me, like, okay, I probably would tell her to give it a try because that's what I did. I gave it a try. And, um, and I've, I've always given anything that my husband, um, and me have been involved with together. I've always given it a try, especially, you know what? I don't really know how you feel about him as a person because, um, you guys, have been separated for so long from one another. Like 12 years is a long time to be away from someone. However, um, if you guys are constantly keeping in touch with each other, and I'm not sure if you're visiting him or not because you didn't say, but if you guys are like in constant communication with one another, and you guys are sharing like some really intimate thoughts. And like, yeah, maybe sometimes people when they're alone, they do get a little bit more vulnerable and they start falling for the person that they're talking to on a daily basis. That 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 type of stuff does happen. But let's just keep it real, you guys. That is her kid's father, and she might do just have some feelings for him. Um, me personally, um, what would I do? Hey, I'm already with somebody. So how do you guys think that I got back together with him? Um, it wasn't like a jail thing. But I've always been there for him, and he's always been there for me. So it's like, okay, regardless of what, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, and I'm going to be there for him. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely going to be there for him, meaning my husband. And it's unfortunate that, that we did get divorced, but, you know, sometimes you know, you have to get away from a person just to make things a little bit better for your life. But also sometimes when you're there for a person all the time, it's kind of like you enable them. So me leaving him alone and getting away from him kind of like made the situation a little bit better for him somewhat. Like he did stop drinking and stuff, but you know, he did have to get money or whatever. Um, that's not an excuse, but Hey, listen, this is my thing. And I know there's probably going to be somebody that got some smart shit to say about me. Like, oh, you're back with your husband. Oh, he came out of jail, whatever. Let me tell y'all something. I've been with that man for 19 years, okay? 19 years. He has um, had his issues just like everybody else has their issues, okay? However, it's all about change. Now, everybody should try to change. It's all about change. I'm all for good change. But I'm also good all for, like, trying to make things work. 
which is good. You never know. You never really know if something's going to work out unless you give it a try or you talk about it. Like, you can't just be like, oh, no, nah, I'm not even trying. Because what if you missed out on something really good? Like, meaning, what if he really did change for the better? You don't know that. You know what I'm saying? Because you didn't give him, like, the benefit of the doubt. You didn't give him a chance. And if you're feeling this way about him and you feel like, you know, maybe you want to give it a chance then, you know what I'm saying? Then go ahead for it. Why not? Just try to, you know... Give it a try. Try it out. You know what I'm saying? It never hurts to try. I'm not saying like you're going to get like the best results, but you can still give it a try. Um, and if it doesn't work out in your favor, then hey, at least you can't, at least you can say you tried. You know what I'm saying? At least you can say you tried. That's all there is to it. I mean, there are some people that are in relationships that it's like, girl, why are you even bothering with dude? Like, niggas that ain't never even went to jail and shouldn't even get a chance like on some real shit like you know what i'm saying like you know how you get these dudes that never even been to jail and they just so scum of the earth that you just like wow why is she even giving this low life dude a chance like he's not even worth it and then you got those that are in jail that are like wow he's like really a good person like you know people go to jail for all different kinds of things like you know what i'm saying like you can't say oh because he's in jail he's a bad person jail doesn't mean that he's a bad person people go to jail for tax evasion not paying any taxes all kind of shit defending their family like okay so do kill somebody but do you really know why he killed somebody he killed somebody because they was trying to to hurt his family. So you, you can't say he's a bad person because would he be a good person if he let that that one particular criminal hurt his family? No. He was he was defending his family or he was defending his beliefs. You know what I'm saying? So not everybody that goes to jail is a criminal or they may be a criminal, but they might not that everybody that not everybody that goes to jail is like a bad person in general. You know what I'm saying? So even though some people, some guys may go to jail for selling drugs, that don't mean they're a bad person like a bad person person, like you know what I'm saying? They, meaning they don't go around killing people. They don't go around hurting women and children, things like that. They're just trying to survive. And it's sad that some people have to survive that way, but that's just the way the world is set the fuck up. And I'm not condoning it, so don't get it twisted. But I'm just saying that, you know, the way the world is, it's so fucked up that we as people have to do all kinds of things to survive. And that is just fucked up, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll give you for an example this. If you don't have health insurance, you get a fine. Like, who the fuck came up with that shit? Like, Obama? I'm thinking it was Obama because that's what I was told. And that's what, yeah, the, he came up with, that's what I read. That's what I heard. He came up with, so if you don't have health insurance, you get a fine at the end of the year. So if you go a certain amount of time without health insurance, you get a fine. And like, that sucks because some people that don't have health insurance can't afford health insurance. You know what I'm saying? They can't afford it. And even if they work, they can't afford it through their job because they don't make enough and they have so many things that they have to, they have a family to support. So they can't afford all that money taken out of their paychecks. However, even in they can't afford it, the people that can't afford it, you're not even trying to give it to them for free or like at a discounted rate, like meaning you're not trying to give them no me Medicaid or nothing like that. And what sucks is here it is, the government like forces people to have all of these things like health insurance. And if you don't have health insurance, you fine it. people, you sending out fines, you give them fines. And that really like sucks because like, who are you to tell somebody that they must have health insurance and you're not even trying to help the situation? You know, you don't qualify for free Medicaid or free health insurance because you make $2 over. Like, that sucks. And then when you have people like this who can't afford things, this is where it comes into play. Like, you know what, I'm going to have to, I got to do what I got to do to survive. You know what I'm saying? Because my hand is being forced. And it like really, really sucks when you think about it. Like, okay, I thought we live in America and I thought we were supposed to, like help one another and be there for one another and hold each other down but no it's not really like that sometimes i think like it sucks like you know don't get me wrong i'm really happy that i'm an american and i live here but the way that the united states is set up is sometimes it's doomed for like failure you know what i mean you have all of these things that like other people support and it sucks because we got all of these homeless people, hungry people, teens that are pregnant, teens that are using drugs. And it sucks because Americans are not trying to help one another. They just shooting each other the fuck down. 
and just trying to get ahead or trying to get above the next person, which really sucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, so I understand you trying to survive, but bitch, so am I. Like, I'm trying to survive just as well as you. You guys know I don't like doing my eyes. I'm trying to survive just as well as you and all means and all means necessary. Like, let me tell y'all, I'll just use this as an example. It's not even an example, but I'll just say this. Y'all know I got kids. And I'm not about to see my kids on no street, being homeless, hungry, or nothing like that. If I had to be a prostitute just to make sure that my kids would be okay, then I would do that. You know what I'm saying? I know that's against the law, and I might end up going to jail. That don't make me no bad person, you know what I'm saying? That don't make me a bad person. It make me a person. That's all I am as a person. And you can either judge me for who I am or or who I'm not. It doesn't really matter. However, people do things because there's a purpose. They have a reason. Some people do things because there ain't no reason. You know what I'm saying? They just fucking stupid or they crazy or they lazy. You know what I'm saying? We got all different kind of people. But, you know, we can't judge Tracy, man, because he in jail. Now, I hate doing my eyes. Seriously. It's a fucking mess. So, my opinion... Um, what I would do, let me tell you something. This is just my thoughts. If you really want to make things work with him and you care about him and stuff and you love him and you thinking about it, you really can't go off of what other people say. You got to do it because that's what Tracy wants. Okay. That's what Tracy wants. If Tracy wants to get back with Michael, then that's what Tracy wants. If Michael and Tracy want to try to work it out and talk things over, then that's what y'all want. And hey, and if it makes you happy and if you like it, girl, then I fucking love it. However, you might have some people that be like, girl, why'd you even go there? And why'd you even, you know, somebody's always going to say something regardless, which really sucks. Some There's always an opinionated person. I'll be telling y'all this all the motherfucking time. There's always a, an opinionated person, okay? That's just like, okay, I'm going to just say this real quick. Now, last week, I put my son's song, his video, at the end of my Real Talk. And that's what the fuck I do. But before I even did that, I had uploaded it just by itself the night before on my YouTube channel, okay? And I didn't say it was my son. Like, you didn't see me in the video, meaning you didn't hear me verbally say, hey, this is my son's video. You know, I'm supporting him. I didn't do any of that like I did on Real Talk Wednesday because I just wanted you guys to know what was at the end of the video and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't have to even do that. I didn't have to tell you guys anything, but I just wanted you guys to know, like, hey, this is my son. I'm supporting him. If you want, you know, you can share the video, whatever. That was all, you know, and if you like it, you like it. If you don't, that's your opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. And there's one thing that's like this. It's what's good for you may not be good for the goose. What's good for the goose may not be good for the gander. However, there are a lot of fucking opinionated people out there. So I'll take this this one, for example. I don't know if anybody said any comments on the Real Talk video that, you know, I use. I put it in, but I really don't give a damn if somebody says some negative comments because I don't have time for it. But I do know this. The day that I posted it up, you know what I'm saying? The day that I posted up, hold on. So before I even go into that, this is the Issa Laurent, Issa Laurent's I Duo Smoker. So I did get this for free too, okay? For free. And this is just an eyeshadow stick. You can use it. I like to use this for everything. Not, Let me not say everything. But on one end, it's like this very pretty frosted color, okay? So I like this. I like to give it, like, if I don't really want to do, like, anything too dramatic, then I'll use this. But I also like to use it as like a highlighter too because it's so pigmented. And it's just a cream, but it's a very pretty cream. And look how pretty that like blends it in. Like, what, honey? Yo, it's like, look at that. And I know I put it after my eyeshadow, my eyeliner. But it's so pretty. Um, and I like it. Like, so I do use this as other for other things. Like, I'll use this on um, well, not my cheeks, but on my lips, on my nose, and stuff like that. And yeah. And the other end is like this dark brown. I'm going to show you guys real quick too. So like I was saying, I posted up the video last week, um, the day before. I posted up my son's um, new video, which is called Dream Cash, a day before my Real Talk video. Okay. And, you know, I went and I read the comments and 
did some girl, she was like, um, and in the, but in the description, it does say that I was supporting my son. I just didn't verbally say it on the computer or on the um, video, but I said it in the description box so you guys will know in case you wanted to read it. But some people don't read shit. But anyway, so um, she was like, you know, I love your videos. They're always on my news feed or something, something like that. And she was like, but this is going to hurt your channel. She was like, this is going to hurt your channel because um, they so quick to call us bitches, um, call us names. So basically she was saying how my son or men in general are so quick to say negative things about women um, because I guess in the video he said, he said he was getting head in the video big deal. You know what I'm saying? And somebody went off of her. Then I went off of her because she was like, and I'm not here for it. And all this like, and it's going to hurt your channel, but and I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm not here for it. If you say I'm not trying to be rude or whatever, or, you know, you love my videos, but you're not here for it. That's kind of rude. So basically this is, I, you know, I said what I had to say, but I also went on Instagram too, because people are a little bit too opinionated. And this is a dark brown poor side right here because people are a little bit too opinionated sometimes. And like, Here's my thing. Like I said on Instagram, it's a song. If you don't like it, then keep it pushing. See, I'm, some of y'all analyze shit and look into shit a little bit too 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 much. If somebody say they popping Molly in the song, y'all just assume that they're a crackhead or a drug addict. You know what I'm saying? And and shit like that. So if he says that he's getting head in the video, y'all just assume like my son is disrespectful to women, which he's not. He got his own freaking family who he takes care of. He has a wife and a son who he takes care of on a daily basis and he works. So he's not disrespectful to her or to any women. So stop assuming, stop looking into shit so much. And, but it's okay. And what I saw, I said was, y'all don't like to hear that about men saying, oh, she was giving me head or nothing. But y'all be so quick to be down the street singing Cardi B, talking about, oh, I was sitting on his face with my pussy and it made him feel like a lake. Whatever the fuck she says, y'all be so quick to be singing that shit out in public loud and proud, okay? Like loud and proud. So, oh, so it's okay for women to say the shit. But when a man says something about a woman doing it to him, y'all be ready to have heart attacks. Like, I just don't understand it. Not even though I don't understand it, I really don't care to neither because it is what it is. Let me tell you something his songs might not be songs for me i'm not going to be sitting around listening to that kind of music because that's not what i do and but i will be a supporter and also one thing i won't do is take something down because somebody said it's going to hurt my channel now i felt like that was kind of a disrespect because in the in the description i did say that was my son and i'm supporting him don't you ever in your life come on my goddamn video talking about oh this is disrespectful it's going to hurt your channel and blah 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 you should be careful what you put you should be careful about what you write let me tell you something i went care if my son said um she was giving him head and so was another girl at the same time i'm gonna put it on my channel because i'm supporting my son and he getting his money so i'm going it's to support song. him it's called the song y'all sometimes look too way too much into shit so now it brings me back into this tracy do what you need to do and make yourself happy don't allow nobody in his family or yours or friends or anything like that to dict um to tell you what is good for you and what's not. As long as you feel comfortable in the situation, then go for it. You know what I'm saying? And like I just said, there are going to be some people that's going to be like, you got back with him, April, and he was in jail. Yeah, I fucking did. Okay. I've been back with him before he was even in jail and he's not in jail. And I've been back with him. All right. I've been back with him a long time. Um, I just don't have to share everything with you guys, but well, it's not that I don't have to share everything with you guys cause I don't, but sometimes I just don't say shit because I already know that there's going to be somebody that's going to say something slick at the mouth and then what's going to happen. I'm going to get besides myself and you know something, let me tell you something. My kids are so happy. That is my kid's father, and they are very happy about the whole situation. Even my children that are not his is really happy about the situation. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm doing what's best for me, not what's best for my children, but what's best for me. Um, and that's who I love. And it sucks sometimes when you really care about somebody and you can't be with them like that and you miss them and you have to wait like and I can understand how she feels because she has to wait for 3 years for him to get out you know what I mean and it sucks but I tell you what Tracy if that's who you want to be with then girl do you and be happy don't let nobody stop your happiness that's what I think don't let nobody stop your happiness if you want to be with him 
I feel like, hey, give it a chance. Can't knock it until you try it, sweetheart. Can't knock it until you try it. And girl, that jail dick be the best dick sometimes. So I'm just, you know, you know, I'm just saying. I know that was a little bit much, but hey, it is what it is. So you guys see, I really do like this. I apologize for the quality of the camera because I'm not even using, uh, this is my vlogging camera and it's the Canon G7X. So normally I'm, you know, in my room and I'm using my other camera. So yeah, I didn't really want to take all that equipment out. This is the number three Smokey Brown. I like this stuff, like for real. Likes it. Now it's time to do some foundation. So now we are going to go into the next one. Okay. Hey Diva, I love your videos and I really value you, excuse me. Hey Diva, I love your videos and I really value your opinion. You are like a wiser sister to all of us. I would like to ask you about something that has been bothering me for a long time. I know you spoke about races recently, the story of the adopted girl, but that really concerns me. I am a white woman in my late 30s and I was raised in a black neighborhood. Being black or white didn't matter to me. I see people, not colors. My best friend is black and we never had a problem with calling ourselves black and white. So here is my question to you and all the divas that watch. Does it offend you? I feel that you have to be extra careful with these words, but when I was a kid, nobody cared. I was white and she was black and neither of us was better. Why do we have to say Caucasian or African American in public when we say white and black at home? I hope my message didn't offend you. I really have no evil intentions towards anyone. I just wanted to clarify this. My friends say they are not offended because they know me, but if there is a stranger calling them black, it's a different situation because he's not with us and we don't know the intentions. I hope my question made sense and you could talk about it in a video. Love you and your family so much. And we're going to just call her Renee. Okay, so Renee wants to know, do we as black people or we as white people get offended when someone be like, oh, well, she's Caucasian or, oh, she's African American. Do we get offended? Um, I don't get offended. If you call me um, black, I ain't getting offended. If you call me white, I'm not getting offended. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get offended by stuff like that because it's not even that serious. Like, for real, like, I wouldn't get offended by that. Um, it's just the color. Like, it's just a word. Like, I don't find, like, an offense to certain things. You know what I'm saying? So, like, to get offended by someone calling you white, you white, shit. And if someone's calling you black, shit, you black. I mean, even though that's the color, like, white people don't really look like the color white, and black people don't really look like the color black. But I guess for through the years, that's what we've been called. Now, some people be like, um, well, you're not an African-American because, like, okay, People make a big deal out of nothing these days, I really feel like. To me, in honesty, like, I really feel like some people just take shit and just run with it because that's what the fuck they want to do. And, and it's unfortunate. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who cares if you're, um, who cares if you're white? Who cares if you're black? Who cares if you're yellow, orange, or whatever? Like, I don't understand why people just take stuff to the extreme sometimes and like really, really get upset about it. Like, okay, I, me, honestly, I wouldn't get offended if somebody said you're, I'm a black girl because, um, you know, as long as you don't call me the N word, then we cool. You know what I'm saying? Now that's what I would get offended about. But if you said, Oh, I'm a black girl, like, okay, cool. Um, or yeah, the white guy over there, uh, I wouldn't, or the white girl over there, I wouldn't get offended. All right. I think, like, to me, in my opinion, like, I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, I don't know how it would feel, like, if somebody was to be like, hey, you African-American, I would be like, what? That, I think, would probably offend me. Like, honestly, I probably would. That would probably offend me because then that's like stressing it to me. And also when I say it's stressing it to me, it's like, okay, are you saying that shit to be funny or are you just saying it because that's what we are or what? Like, I mean, like, I'm just trying to figure this out. Like, 
One time, I never forget, this girl left a comment on my video because I was saying African American. And she was like, are you an African American? And I was like, what? She's like, you're not from Africa and all of this. Like, first of all, bitch, how you even know if I'm from Africa? You really don't know where I'm from. I never told you that shit. But she like took it to a whole different level. She was like, I'm, I'm tired of black people calling each other African Americans. And she was black. So I don't know what her problem was. She probably was just confused too. But um, see, now, now, now you see what I'm saying. Like people take offense into all kind of things. Like some people get offended when you call them an African American. Some people get offended when you call them black. Some people call get offended if you call them a mulatto or biracial or people just get offended with all different kind of things, and it sucks because it's just a how about you just call people people? Like, I have white friends, and there, I said it. I have um, my best friend, Rebecca. She's she's half Puerto Rican and half Mexican. I don't call her half Puerto Rican and half Mexican girl or anything like that. Um, and I have friends that are Mexicans and shit. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that chola. They don't get offended by it or, you know, they, they don't take it no type of way. I guess maybe because it's me. However, I have said things in public like oh the white guy right there the white guy didn't get offended by it but like i say it all depends on the person like so we're gonna try this out it all depends on the person themselves like you know what i'm saying who who you're talking to some people just take shit to the extreme and i think sometimes people take shit to the extreme just because they're bitter or they have nothing to do or they just overanalyze shit like it is not that fucking serious like seriously it's not that fucking serious like so no i wouldn't take offense to it but you know like i don't know some some black women would probably get offended if a, a white girl was like it's the black girls over there well i guess it would be it depends on how you say it though too or it's the African-American girls. That I would get offended too. So, like, I guess it really doesn't matter. Some people get offended. Now, if we was like, oh, it's that niggas over there. They, what? The niggers? Oh, okay. So, it all depends on the way you're saying it, I think, and who's saying it, you know? Like, I don't know why we even have to call each other. But I guess that just is identifying the person so you know who's talking about who. But I guess if I was like to say to somebody like, oh, yeah, it's the white girls right there. What if the white girl was like, what did you call me? I called you the white girl because that's what the fuck you are. No pun intended. I'm not meaning anything mean by it. I'm not meaning it as a disrespect. I'm just trying to tell them that it's the white girl, not the black girl, but the white girl. So they know where the fuck to go to. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? Like, would you get offended by it? <laughs> me personally, um. I, I don't I don't really be looking into shit like so deep like that. Like, you know why? Because I feel like this. Life is too short and there's so many other things in the world to worry about in life. Like meaning, um there's just so much more in life to worry about besides somebody calling you a white girl or a black girl or a Puerto Rican girl, especially if they're not meaning it in a harmful way. I just think like there's just so much more to worry about in life besides stuff like that. That's just my take on it. You know what I mean? And so for me, I really wouldn't get too offended by it. I would just, you know, like, okay, she's just trying to describe me. It's no pun intended. They're not meaning anything by it. But, you know, there are some that get really offended by just like the littlest shit and it's like you be like dude lighten up a little bit it's not even that fucking serious let's calm down you know what i'm saying some people just don't want to they just like some people just like to take shit to the extreme because they just like to be so opinionated and voice themselves about shit i'm not about to let certain shit piss me off all the time life is too short so now we're going to move on to the next one. I do kind of like this beauty blender, okay? I'm kind of feeling it. And it's easy to wash, it said. <laughs> okay. So this is a doozy. This is a long one. My, hi, April. Okay. My name is blank, but you can change my name. Okay. We're going to call her Tiffany. Um, hi, April. My name is Tiffany. I've been watching you for about six months now, and I love your advice. I've watched every video. 
laugh out loud. We have so much in common. I'm an introvert as well. The small amount of friends I have, I've had my entire life. I am, a, um, I'm also very outspoken when need to be. I surprise people sometimes. We've had the same type of upbringing, bougie in the projects with parents that worked, had rules and kept a clean home. Okay. Well, I wasn't really bougie though. No, I just was quiet and stuff. I never bougie. Um, cause we was poor. So I don't think I could be bougie. Um, yeah. So my story is that I have been in a relationship for 16 years. We have a son together and he has been heavily around my daughter since she was three. My daughter is now 20. We are and we're best friends. We hate and love all the same things. We can talk about anything from frivolous fluff to deep um, psychological conversations. However, we have been having some communication issues, arguing more than usual. I didn't like how he treated me when my mom was sick and after she passed away through lung cancer. Instead of him addressing our issues as a married couple, he cheated and that really ended us. We probably could have fixed those communication issues, but once he was with someone else, it all became insomerable. I love him dearly, but I can't trust him. No matter how hard I try, I can't trust him. He doesn't feel like he needs to give me reassurance to fix our issues. He feels like I should just trust him blindly, shaking my head. My problem is, how do I get over this? How do I move on? We have tried to make it work, but we had a whole relation, but he had a whole relationship with this woman in another state. He was seeing her when he traveled for work. Bitch knew about his family and still fucked with him. I think I think it would have been easier to get over it if he had just fucked someone, but he had a full-blown relationship. I found out because after a few months of him being with her, she felt like she should be known to his family and friends, despite his family and home that he had. So she hacked into his Facebook and posted a collage pictures of them, five pics at different places. He was doing so much with her, she thought she should be known by his family. The day before my fucking birthday, she posted that shit. My best friend saw it first, took a screenshot and called me. It was up on his timeline for about 20 minutes. That was all that was needed for every family member to see it. Most embarrassing day ever. Calls from my aunts and grandmothers asking, who is this bitch? Another element to this is I lost my mom and she was the closest person to me besides her. Excuse me. I lost my mom and he was the closest person to me besides her. I don't let too many people in that in I don't let too many people in that deeply. So that means a lot. As I'm writing this email, I'm my ki in my kitchen cooking Thanksgiving dinner. Two of the most important people in my life are both gone. I feel so alone now. I used to cook this dinner with her every year and with him. There he was, a healthy distraction after she passed. He would let me vent and cry about her. He always makes me laugh and he would share stories about her. So it made me happy and more bearable. It made it more bearable. Rewind. We grew up together. So we had known each other and each other's families for years before the relationship. Now it's just me and my two kids. I've never been so depressed. I keep a good face for them, but I'm dying inside. I miss my mom and I miss him. I know I can't be with him because I just don't trust him. He wants to move away and have more kids, but I can't because there's no trust. How do I get over this? What do I do to feel better? I just want to move on. Even if this doesn't make real talk, I'd appreciate any advice you can give. Sorry this is long. I'm a little tipsy. Laugh out loud. Here are pics of us. The black and white one is my mom and dad. I'm so sorry about Coco. P.S. I'm so sorry about Coco. Dogs are family and the hurt is just as deep as if they were human. My condolences to you and your family. I hope this email finds you in good spirits. That's so sad. Like, Seriously, I'm trying not to cry because I just did my makeup. But, wow, that's just, like, so sad. Like, why would he do that to her? Like, for real, like, they look so cute together, too. Wow. You know something? It sucks when you with somebody for so long and they just cheat on you it kind of like breaks you down and like i understand what she's saying because she's i i would feel the same way like it's i'm moving my table up because it feels like it's getting dark in one spot guys sorry hold on i'm gonna bring my ring light closer so bear with me one second okay so like i was saying like it sucks when you've been with somebody for so long right and you just like kind of like put all your trust in them. Like seriously, you put all your trust in them and you give them like your heart. And then they just like disappoint you like to the point like it's like, 
wow, dude, did you just really go there and just like break my heart like that? Like, and I feel her, like I understand her pain. Like, I don't really literally understand her pain, but I understand what she said when she was like, um, well, he, he had a full blown relationship with her and she could have just like got over it a little bit better and forgave him if it wasn't like a full blown relationship with old girl, but he had a full blown relationship with this bitch. And you know what I'm saying? Like that hurts. That fucking hurts. Like that's not even this hurtful, but that shit is embarrassing. I just wipe some of it off. It's like embarrassing. The bitch went and posted pictures of him and her on Facebook. Like, you know what I'm saying? Tiffany's husband's mistress posted pictures of them two on Facebook. Like, wow, that like really, really sucks. Like, I would be so upset if that were me and embarrassed. So like, I know how she feels, so she just can't trust him. And I get that. Like, I would feel like the same way. Like, um, you know, like, wow. And like she said, I think it would be easier to accept that he just fucked the bitch and went about his business, but he didn't just fuck the bitch. He had a relationship with her. He went and was visiting her. They were doing shit together. You know what I'm saying? Taking pictures and shit. Like, first of all, if you're cheating on your wife, dude, you don't never post no pictures. You don't take pictures with your mistress, bitch. You don't do that shit because now you're just giving them fucking ammunition to throw out there. Like, it's social media nowadays. Who fucking does shit like that? Like, why would you take pictures of you and your mistress? Okay, so now you're traveling out of state and you know that bitch know your Facebook page. And then so why would you even take that chance? She know about your family and shit. That would me. I would be just, I would just, listen. Okay, it's one thing if a bitch don't know, but if that bitch knew about you and and shit, I would I would be I would I would be driving down to where the fuck that bitch lived and I would be busting the fucking ass. Okay, I'm sorry because now you're trying to disrespect because you knew about me. You fucking knew about me. I'm gonna use one of these brushes right here from Juno. You knew about me, but you still decided to fuck with my husband. So y'all both dirty dogs. So y'all both gonna get it. And yeah, that bitch is definitely gonna get it. I mean, I'm saying. I know I might that not that might not be right to some people, like, oh, you can't do that to the girl because it's not her fault. But if she knew about you, then yes, bitch, it's her fault. But for me, like, if that was me, I would be hurt too, because like it's one thing if they cheat. It, it's not right either way. It's just not right either way. Why do I look so yellow? Hold on, guys. I don't know why I'm yellow, but I don't even care. So I'm going to use this um, here. Um, so it's one thing to, like, you know what I'm saying, um, cheat. Either one is not good to do, okay? But when a motherfucker has a whole family... Or not even a whole family, but he have a family on you or dude has a whole relationship, like a whole different life. Like, cause to me, that's like a whole different life. Like for real, like he had a whole different relationship. He had a full blown relationship. Like they were going places. They was doing things as a couple and shit. And then she felt the need like to let herself be known. Like she wanted the family to know about her and shit. Now that shit right there, I think I would have killed that nigga. Like for real or some realness. I think I would have had to kill him like, oh, word, you got this bitch, you fucking her. And now she got the audacity to show everybody who the fuck she is posting collage pictures of y'all two on Facebook and shit on your timeline. And then you got everybody in my family like disrespecting me or not even disrespecting me, but questioning me about who the fuck this bitch is with you. Let me tell y'all. Mistresses ain't supposed to be known, okay? Y'all bitches, whoever y'all mistresses are, y'all bitches ain't supposed to be known. Meaning y'all supposed to be hidden, not getting bold enough to where y'all can come on fucking social media and start posting pictures. I wish a bitch would. No, I don't. Because if a bitch was to do some shit like that to me, I'm sorry. But I guess April gonna be in jail and y'all gonna be writing me and I'm gonna have pen pals from jail. So I guess I wouldn't feel that way. I mean, I don't wish a bitch would. However, mistresses be just taking that shit to a whole nother level. But let's see. What did he tell her? Because he had to give her some type of encouragement or some type of backbone to make it feel like they was really going to be something. Because you just don't go in there and do some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, either, like, what what gave the bitch the, the right to just, like, feel like, 
I don't know about this sponge, okay? What gave her the right to feel like it was okay to go on his social media because it's holding the water in it, I'm noticing. To go on to go on his social media and post pictures. Like, did he tell her something? Did he give her some kind of words of encouragement? Like, because that's what the fuck it is to me. Words of encouragement, bitches. Words of encouragement. Um, hey, we're gonna be together. Fuck, fuck my wife, Tiffany at home. We're gonna be together. We're gonna be an item and all of this. Like, so did he give her some type of words of encouragement that she got the balls up? to feel like it was okay to go on his page and post pics of the two of them having a good fucking time somewhere. Like, cause I'm just trying to figure the shit out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just like everybody else. And now she just trying to move on. Okay. She loved him and she missed him. And now she's trying to move on. But what makes it so bad is this. Sometimes it seems like men in general, pick the wrong time to do shit, like, on some real shit, like, they pick the wrong fucking time to do shit, like, I say this because her mother just passed away, and shit, oh my god, I I'm never gonna come in here and do another video with this camera for a makeup video, because I just can't, it's, like, really pissing me off, okay, it's, like, really pissing me off, and I bet you if I had a way in my room and did it, it would have been so much better, but uh, I just can't, I gotta get the hang of this camera, but, so if I look yellow, I do apologize, I'm probably gonna end up having to change my camera anyway, in case I die, but men seem like they choose the wrong time to do shit, like, for real, he chose the time when her mother just passed away from cancer, and she know he knew that. How, it didn't even matter if he knew how she felt about her mother. Everybody loved their mother. I, I could. Well, there might be some people in the world that don't love their mother, but that means that something is wrong with either them as a person or their mother. Okay. However, he picked like the really the worst time ever. Does my makeup look like shit today? He picked like the worst time ever to want to cheat on his wife, like, on some real shit, like, wow, that was, like, first of all, not even the word inconsiderate is not even right, even when you cheating in general, that shit is inconsiderate, but damn, you picked the worst time ever to cheat on her, when she needed you the most, and when she just lost someone in her family, that was so fucking low, and selfish, and just really, like, I can't even describe what it was, all I know is it's this. That that was some real fucked up shit to do to somebody. You know what I'm saying? When she needed him the most, that's what he did to her. And he did it with some low-life bitch that went on, on Facebook and posted that shit. So I know they're not together no more. You know what I'm saying? Meaning him and the floozy that posted the shit because he's trying to move away and have kids with his wife, but she don't want to have nothing to do with him. She just want to move on. She depressed and sad. And I guess she want to know basically how does she get over that shit? How does she move on? What should she do? Hmm. I know what would make you feel better if you, if you go to that bitch house and beat her ass, but you know, I'm not going to tell you to do that because that wouldn't be right of me, but I know that shit would make me feel better as a person. However, honey, let me tell you something. Hurt is one thing. It, it takes time for the heart to heal. You know what I'm saying? You cannot put no fucking time limit on when you want to stop hurting and when it's going to stop hurting you. That shit is going to stop hurting you when it's going to stop hurting you. And you know what's going to make it worse is, and it's going to make the process longer? It's because you guys have communication with each other. You know what I mean? Meaning he's around, you're communicating with him, he's talking to you. And so you're not, he's not giving you any time to just like get over him and just be about your business and go about your way. It's because he's still there and he's still in the picture and he's still talking to you and he's still like, you know what I'm saying? So that's what's making the process a lot longer. You know what I mean? What you need to do, my dear, is to leave him alone. Like when I say leave him alone, meaning try to cut communication with him. Make it very, very limited, okay? Sometimes you got to limit yourself from people just so you can be sane. Because if you don't, them people that are fucking with you and, and, and making your shit, um, are messing you up mentally or just putting you through shit, it's going to make it a whole lot worse for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, as long as you have him around and he's putting things in your ear and he's able to say, well, I care about you and I want to be with you and stuff like that, it's not making it any easier. You know what I'm saying? 
it's not he's not making it any easier as long as he's around and y'all are communicating with one another it's going to make it hard so you definitely need some time away from him you need for him to just communicate with your kids and that's it you guys have a kid together your daughter your what did you say your daughter is 20 and then you have a son together and i think your son, i don't think your son is 3 right you didn't say that um let's see Okay, so you, okay, we have a son together. We've been in a relationship for six years. Your daughter is 20. So your son is old enough to where he don't really have to communicate through you to see or talk about your son unless it's like something with school related or something like that. That's why with me, I would just kind of like, you know, limit the communication ties, okay? That's what you need to do. That's the only way you're going to be able to move or move ahead and move on without him being in your ear and without it hurting. Now, for one, you can't move on that quick about your mom because that's your mom and you love her and you know, and that's how you feel. And it's grieving. There's a grieving process, honey. Even the process that you're going through with your husband, that's a grieving process too. You know what I'm saying? Now, look, I still like my, my beef with her. It's a grieving process too. You know what I'm saying? So I can't say put a time limit on something, especially with your mom, you know, and I understand how you feel. You feel lonely, especially in the holidays. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. I know how you feel because that's how I feel. Even though I have my kids here for um, Thanksgiving and stuff, I didn't have all my kids here. Like my son, Jerron, and his girlfriend, or his wife, rather, I call it his wife, and, and, and his son, they weren't here with me. So my, my, my household was really quiet and stuff on... Um, Thanksgiving and shit. It was really quiet. And I mean, like, that's okay that it was quiet, but it was really, really quiet. And like, I don't really like too much quiet, but it, it just felt like I was missing something. And I was, I felt like I was missing like my family. I felt like I was missing my husband. You know what I'm saying? I miss those things around the holidays, you know? I do miss those things a lot. Like, I love family. And when it's, when you're alone, you know, I think that's a lot of the times when we're alone, that's when we think about a lot of things the most because it affects us. We're able to think more when we don't have people around us, which really sucks. And during the holidays, it really sucks because nobody wants to be alone, especially during the holidays. So I get it. I totally understand how you feel. Like I felt that way um, this Thanksgiving. And I mean, I didn't feel too alone, but I just felt like, you know, like, damn, I miss my husband. I miss my son. I miss my other grandson. You know what I mean? Like I miss those things. And it sucks when you don't have your family there. And it really sucks when you have somebody that you counted on and that was your best friend and they disappointed you because that's what he did. He disappointed her, which is unfortunate, but he did. He disappointed her. And you know, it takes some getting over. And now all he wants to do is just have you forgive him and move on. Shit don't work like that, okay? It don't work like that. But it's unfortunate that some men are like that. Like, they want you to just, like, they feel like you should just apologize and just start trusting them again. However, would they trust you again if, if you did some shit like that to you, to them? Hell no. If you was to be in a relationship, a full-blown relationship with a, another man in another state, you think that, and your husband found out about that, do you think that he's going to trust you? You'll probably be every fucking whore in the book, okay? Every freaking whore. You, he make up some new names that you never even heard of, okay? You'll be like, well, what the hell is that? A scallywag, a, a time ticker, whatever. He make up some whole new shit. You'll be every type of thought, tramp, slut in the book, and then some new ones that he just made the fuck up, okay? So, no. It's all about trust. You got to learn to trust somebody. You got to trust them. You can't just feel like, oh, it's okay. We're going to go through this together. You're going to get over it. Nah, I'm not going to get the fuck over it because, listen, I'm going to get over that shit when I get the fuck over it. Why is my thing like, come on now. Okay. I'm going to get over that shit when I get over it. But I really do feel like this. Just to give yourself some fucking sanity, girl. Because I'm just saying, I really feel like you need for him to stay out your face for a while. I'm gonna try this brush. This is a very like dense brush. Ooh, Ooh I could really smell it. Mm, I love this stuff. This is the Too Faced um, Chocolate Soleil. Oh, I love this stuff. You guys see me use it all the time. Um, 
but I really feel like he's going to have to leave you alone. You're going to have to limit your communication with him for real. Sometimes when you give somebody too much power or authority or just too much or something, they take that shit to the limit. Like, like they just take that shit too far. Like with him, I would not have gave him all of that um, opportunity to be able to talk to me when he wanted to or communicate with me when he wanted to. That shit would have been out the door, like on some real shit. I wouldn't have gave him that opportunity. So that's where you're going to have to nip that shit in the bud. Cut that shit, cut all the communica communication ties with him. Like, you don't have to cut it so much, but you gotta nip some shit in the bud with a dude. Like, for real. And that way, you have some sanity, girl, because if you don't, that nigga gonna just keep harassing you and harassing you. And not only harassing you, he just gonna keep on asking you or saying to you, well, when we gonna get back together? When we gonna get back together? Like, you know something? Let me tell y'all something. To cheat on somebody is a horrible thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like this. If you got to cheat on somebody or if you're just not happy, then let them know and move about your business. Don't go cheating on people. Like, that shit is not cool to be cheating on people. Like, I don't know. Like, for me, um, I would, I mean, we've all done it. So I'm not going to say, oh, I didn't, I've never done that shit. Because we've all done it. Okay. However. I don't think it's right. Just because we've done it don't mean it's right. I can I can blatantly say that shit wasn't right. Like that shit was not right to be cheating on somebody. Like, would you want that shit done to you? No. You would never want anybody to cheat on you. Cause why would you? Why would you? Would you no? And I don't know. I just think that he was dead ass wrong. And I I feel her pain, like for real. Like on some realness. I understand what she's saying when she was like, well, it would be one thing if he just hit it and ran, but the nigga had a whole family and shit. Like, not even a family, but he, shit, he might have if he kept on fucking with the bitch. He had, like, a whole full-blown relationship with that bitch, like, and that shit, that, that is definitely not cool. So, in my opinion, I would definitely tell him, like, listen, you're going to have to stop coming around. You're going to have to stop harassing me. Um, I need time to myself and I need time to get over this. And you're not giving me that opportunity, nor are you giving me the respect to do that. So I'm going to really need you to back off. Back the fuck off, son. For real. Look, there you go. I'm lightening it up. Maybe I lightened it up a little bit too much because now I look freaking pale. Okay. All right. Ooh, ciao. So, and now I'm going to go into this Becca Cosmetics. This is the blurring setting powder, soft light blurring powder. So I used it yesterday. I don't know how I really feel about it, okay? Um, it didn't give me any flash, but it's pink, okay? So I'm just going to try it out. We're going to try it out. I'm going to try it out. We're going to try it out with this end, okay? Because you know what? I already had issues doing my makeup today. I would have been finished and it wouldn't have looked like this. I had to keep doing extra stuff and I don't like having to do extra stuff. Like y'all see me, I had to put on extra um, concealer because this beauty blender sponge in my hand right here had water on it still. or It was still like really, really wet and not cool. Just not cool. All right. I hate having to put too much stuff on my face because I just don't like a lot of makeup on my face. It makes my face just feel hard and dry. And I don't like to have, like, I just don't like to have a lot of makeup on my face. So I'm going to let it sit for a minute. I didn't put a lot. Maybe I should, I don't know. Should I? Like, I don't, I don't really want to put a lot. Now, great. My camera battery is dying, which means that I'm going to have to switch it up and use a different camera now because all of my batteries are freaking dead. Um, yep. They're not even charged all the way. Maybe that one is the Canon. We'll see. I think All right, you guys. So I had to change my camera. This is a lot better. Um, I, you know what? I'm never using that vlogging camera again to record videos because, no, it was just a waste of my time. Like, my makeup looked all yellow. My whole... Whatever. It is what it is. So I can't even remember what I was saying, but I just tell you this much. Cheating on someone is not right at all. Like you don't you don't 
we don't do things like that as an adult. I would like to hope that people don't. I'm about to brush this back up, blurring stuff off my face because I had it sitting on there long enough. And I don't want to have any bad flashbacks. Y'all can see it right here, right? So hopefully it works out for me um, because I'll be really upset. Oh, wow. So far in person, it looks pretty decent, okay? But I'm really not too happy about my makeup today at all. That beauty blender sponge, my contour looks a little bit off. Um, I think when you get used to using like your own certain tools, you just use what you have because you're so used to that. And like, I hate trying out new stuff sometimes because I definitely have to get used to it. But yeah, that was not making me happy um, at all that, um, that camera. And I guess because look, I don't use that camera all the time. So I really haven't taken the time out to, um, you know, see how it works, what's it about, you know what I mean? I haven't taken the time out to mess with it like that because I just use it for certain things, but it costs enough, so it just should work right. But I really still feel like the lighting is not that great, and like I really don't feel like, I just tried to do something different like to be in here, but um, yeah, never mind with that. I won't be doing that again. And it's the sun also, that window above me, it's like messing up everything. I hate that one too. I guess next time if I do a real talk and I want to do it in here or some type of makeup video in here, I best to do that in the evening because that's when the sun is going. Because girl, that's why I be talking to y'all, but I be always complaining about the sun. Like, ooh, that's too much. Like the sun this, the sun that, the sun be messing it up for me. Like for real. Be messing up my videos, be having my videos change in the color. Like, I'm like the worst YouTuber ever, for real. <sighs> this real talk was like all over the place. Like, I'm so disappointed with, with the way this whole camera thing went today. Now, look, now it's changing because the sun is, uh, I just can't. Okay, I just can't. Okay, here we go. Hey, April, I have been watching you for years. You showed me how to rock half wigs, and I love you. Here's my issue. I changed the names. My niece, Sarah, passed away six months ago, suddenly from cancer. We were very close, and we're more like sisters. Why is everyone dying in these? She was married to Paul, and he has a five-year-old named Kayla. Kyla, they live in another state. Paul is a very nice guy and has never said anything out line. I plan to visit my grandniece, Kyla, for the holidays. And Paul texted me and asked if I would think about having a future with him as a husband. I couldn't believe him. He really doesn't have any family, so I'm going to say he's still grieving. He has his own business and asked is wanted and asked if I wanted to be business partners as well. How do I tell him I am not interested in him and this is out of line? I am over 40 years old, a divorced mother with a grown son. I was thinking about moving there to help out with my niece and getting my own place. But after I set him straight, I'm afraid he may cut me off and I need your advice, girl. I enclose pictures of your for your eyes only. The last one is me and my niece. The top one is me after losing over 50 pounds. Will you go, girl, okay? Because over, losing over 50 pounds is some hard work. So you go, all right? And your niece is so cute. Oh, she's pretty. Now, her niece is an older, you know, she's a grown-up. So she's not a little kid. So basically, my girl, she... um. Her grandniece, so um, this is her grandniece, her niece's daughter, so that's her grandniece. Okay, so she has a picture with her niece, and her grandniece is the one that passed away. And I do apologize. I'm so sorry for your loss, sweetheart. I, I just hate to read that people have passed away, and I know we all do, but it's just so sad and mess with me. So anyway, um, I don't think she put her name here, so we're just going to call her Jacqueline. Jacqueline has um, been, you know, basically talking with Paul, which is her grandnieces, her niece's husband, and her niece passed away. So um, 
Sarah passed away and this is Sarah's husband, Paul. So Paul asked, um, Jacqueline, you know, she talks to him and I guess because he doesn't have any family and you know, he may feel like out of touch with everybody or out of touch with reality. He asked Jacqueline, would she think about having a future with him? Okay. Hello. I'm gonna go back into trying this palette again. So he asked Jacqueline about having a future with him. I'm going to use the Adobe one. And so Jacqueline basically is not interested at all in Paul's ass. He also asked her, would she like to be business partners with him? I don't think she's interested in being either or at this moment in time. She's definitely not interested in being his love mate, okay? And she's definitely not probably interested in being a business partner with him. And probably not a business partner because you know how some people take things a whole different way. He might feel like, oh, they business partners. They might feel like, he might feel like, oh, they getting close and he might try to pull a move on her. However, I think that it was kind of inappropriate of Paul to ask Jacqueline something like that. Like, what is he trying to do? Keep it all in the family? Like on some real shit? Like, um, you want to know how to tell him that you ain't interested in a nice way. Okay. And to set his ass straight. Honey, either way, he probably, either way, he's probably not going to take that shit too lightly. I'm just saying, like, who wants to be turned down? Like, regardless of how nice you tell somebody you ain't interested in them, I think it still hurts their feelings. Like, for real, that's like an embarrassment. Like, oh, I really like her, but she just, like, dissed me and she don't want to be bothered with me type shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's try this color out right here, which is called Mon Moni. Moni. Like if somebody was to tell me they didn't want to be with me or they weren't interested in me, I would feel kind of really embarrassed. Like seriously, I would feel really embarrassed because I put my feelings into you and I felt some type of way towards you. And now you're telling me you're not interested. I would definitely feel embarrassed, especially to be told no. Like nobody likes to hear the word no, okay? Nobody likes to hear the word no. And definitely nobody likes to be turned down, especially when they feeling you and you like, I'm not interested, dude. Back the fuck off. Like for real, like that's embarrassing. So it don't matter how nice you tell him or which way you tell him, he's still going to take it hurtful because you let him down and now he done embarrassed himself. So see, he wouldn't really have embarrassed him himself if you would have told him, yeah, we could, you know, hook up or whatever. He would have felt like, okay, I'm not defeated. I won. I'm the champ, whatever. He would have felt that way. However, however, girl, um, I'm gonna try this color, this dark color right here. However, you don't want to be with him. You don't, you're not interested at all in him. And now you got to tell him that. Now, sometimes we try to tell people things to not hurt their feelings, but here's the thing with that. That's the issue. Sometimes we tell people things, we try to tell them in a way not to hurt their feelings. They don't get it. You know what I'm saying? And they still keep on. It don't matter what it is. You try to avoid hurting their feelings. You try. I try to spare your feelings. And then they just don't get that you're trying to spare their feelings. And they continuously do the shit still. Meaning... If Jacqueline was to tell Paul in a nice way, like, you know, Paul, I understand you're going through something, but right now I'm just not interested. I'm trying to get my life together. I'm trying to improve on things, get a good job, save up some money. So right now it's not a good time. He might take that as really right now it's not a good time and he still might try to pursue that shit. And then what's going to happen is Jacqueline going to have to lay his ass the fuck out and tell him in a way that might really hurt his feelings. So... It don't matter if you try to tell somebody in a way that you're trying to spare their feelings because sometimes, like I said, when you try to spare somebody's feelings, they just don't understand and get that you're trying to spare their motherfucking feelings and they still keep up with the dumb shit. Like, for real. They still continue on with the dumb shit. They still be trying to push up on you. You know what I'm saying? They still be trying to get with you. They still try. I've had those situations. Like I'm, I, I try to spare everybody's feelings. Like you know what I'm saying, always. But then you just keep doing the same shit, and I can't spare your feelings no more. Like take for example with my son Wuzzle. He came back, 
And I feel like this. I, I pay all these bills up in this house. All the motherfucking bills on my own. Don't nobody help me pay shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't nobody, like my daughter Tati, she's trying to find another job right now. So she don't have no money like that. Wuzzle, he don't have no job. So if I'm paying all these bills, the least you could do is wash the dishes and shit. I already said something to them about it. I already had a talk with them about it. However, four days go by and I'm still fucking feeling myself doing, having to wash the dishes and do all this shit. And here's my thing. I'm not going to pay all these motherfucking bills up in this house and then have to clean every fucking thing too. You must be out your mind. If that's the case, y'all motherfuckers can go find your own apartments because y'all grown. That's not about to go down here. So, you know, I tried to spare his feelings by not being mean and going off about it the first time. That's why I had the talk. Okay. However, I guess when I try to spare someone's feelings, they take that shit as it's a motherfucking joke and don't really fucking react upon it and just be like, oh, okay, she don't really mean that shit. So what did I have to do? I had to, um, a few days ago, he was out there in the garage with his friend, you know, Josh, white Josh. Now I'm saying the word white because it's black Josh and it's white Josh. So I want you guys to know, not that it really even matters, but he was out there with his friend, white Josh was always over. He lived out here in Garden Lakes too. So I, I had just came back from, okay, I had, this was Saturday. I had not had gotten any sleep in over two days. So I was exhausted. The sleep, the amount of sleep that I did get was like, excuse me, was two hours on Friday and like an hour and a half on Saturday because I had to make sure that I was up Saturday morning by eight o'clock so that I could make sure that the sale was posted up because I was having that, um, that lot sale. And I told everybody what time it was going to start and you know what I'm saying? And everything like that. So I wanted to make sure that I was on my P's and Q's, you know what I'm saying? So I got up and I took a shower and I only got an hour and 40 minutes of sleep, okay? Because that's what my fucking alarm clock said. And I probably didn't even get that much sleep. So, um, I get this sleep and I wake up and I'm really tired. Like, I'm like, damn, I don't even want to have a sale because I'm so fucking tired. But I got to have the sale because I already told everybody. And I'm not going to be disappointing anyone. So anyway, I had the sale and then I got dressed and I went to Toys R Us and I didn't and I went to Toys R Us like at nine thirty, ten o'clock. I didn't come home until like three o'clock because I was shopping so hard. Like two thirty, three o'clock is when I came home. So then I had to run my daughter Tati somewhere and just a bunch of shit I had to do, okay? I never got to take a nap. I never got to do anything like rest. I really wanted to take a nap. I wanted to rest. I wanted to just to relax. So when I came back, I had dropped my daughter Tati off, and I had her son and stuff. I had, you know, and I had to drop my daughter Nay off for her friend. So it was just me, Tinky, Mumsy, and then Wuzzle was here. Wuzzle was in the garage with Josh. So with white Josh. So when I come in the house, I go in the kitchen because now I'm hungry. I hadn't eaten anything all day but one of my protein milks. And I'm starving. I couldn't eat because I had to wash the fucking dishes. It was a sink full of dishes. Now, mind you, none of them dishes is mine because I haven't been there all day. So I start washing the dishes and shit. And as I'm washing them, I'm bitching. Like, I'm really bitching. I'm going the fuck off and everything. Now, also, mind you, I'm going off like this because he has been back since the 20th of November. And that nigga ain't picked up a dish and washed a dish yet. When I say he has not washed a dish yet, I was waiting. I was being very patient. So I've already had to say something to him about his room. Because I had just went ahead and put all my time, my time, meaning cleaning it, and money into that room doing it over okay let me tell y'all i already said something to him i bought a new bed frame a new bed because he had his mattress was on the floor so i bought everything new well not everything new but damn near everything new okay and um before i even keep going 
This is the um, Saint Laurent's Touch of um, Glow Shot. Um, it's Saint Laurent's Glow Shot, and this one is in the color number color called Sunrise. So basically, what this is is like a highlight, a cream highlight, and not only is it a cream highlight, but it smells so good. So I used, I've been using this every day since I gotten this. Okay, so all of the stuff that I've been using, not everything, but um, like the Saint Laurent, the eyeshadow, the Becca. I have been getting those things from Octoly. So I'm telling you guys, definitely check out Octoly. So I like this. This is really good if you don't want like a lot of um, highlight. It's really good for that. But it smells so good. Really, it does smell amazing. So yes and this one is the sunrise and there's like a lot of different colors not a lot but there's enough colors to the you know saying to the collection but i like this a lot so it doesn't like give you high beaming highlight but it gives you like a nice reflection of highlight okay so as you guys see that you can either use like a beauty blender to um to put it in or you can use like a dense brush i like to use this dense brush and i'll just tap it in like really slowly because i didn't notice with the beauty blender it kind of like um sucks it up like you know eats it up so i kind of like to use it just like this all right and just dap it in very slowly and it just gives you like this pretty glow and you can also use it if you don't put makeup on as well and i like it like look at that it's like a nice decent type of glow so you're not looking like you out of space all gleamed up and glowed up you know what i mean yes and of course i probably will come back and put some other stuff on because i always do but you know so anyway so like i was saying um I already had told him about the bed. Like I had put my comforter set on his bed, which was over a hundred dollars, and um, and I had bought a new. I had bought a, a headboard and footboard set, and that was a sleigh bed. I mean, like it it wasn't brand new, but I bought it from somebody from um Offer Up, and I paid like sixty dollars for it, which was not bad, but it was new to him and it was new to me and it was in very good condition. Okay, so I had bought that. And I had cleaned the room. I had bought new curtains. I had did all of that shit. And, I, and as soon as you come back, you know, and I, hang, and I hung stuff up on the wall. As soon as you come back, you just throwing shit everywhere and stuff like that. Like, I didn't think that was acceptable. Like, you, that to me was like a sign of disrespect. To me, I felt like it was a disrespect. Like, you just take my hard work and it ain't nothing to you. You know what I'm saying? So I was nice. I said something about it and I, I tried to spare his feelings because I already know how I can get you. Now, here we go on to the situation. He he didn't clean it up right away, but he cleaned it up, but it wasn't good enough for me. So, here we go. Saturday, I couldn't eat, like I said, because I had to wash this fucking sink full of dishes. So, here it is. You here sitting in there in the, in the garage, chilling and laughing it up with your fucking friend while I'm in here slaving, paying bills, and fucking washing dishes. And I was bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching the whole time. So, then you know what I did? I was like, Fuck this. I'm not about to be nice. See, I'm going to use this St. Laurent's Eye Duo as a highlight right here. So then I was like, you know what? I'm not about to sit out here and keep bitching about it. No, I went and I don't like to, like I said, I don't like to hurt nobody's feelings. I try to spare your feelings. But you know what? You ain't trying to spare mine. I already just had a talk with you and your sister four days prior about how I feel taken advantage of and how y'all don't do sh enough shit around here. But you didn't really take me as being for real. So I had to open up that garage and they were just sitting out there chilling, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know what's so funny? And they was like, what? And I wasn't even talking to Josh, but he was there. So I was like, what the fuck is so funny is y'all think I'm a goddamn joke. Y'all want to be up in my motherfucking house just chilling and not picking up shit and not washing shit. But it's okay when I pay all these motherfucking bills and I wash this and I wash it. If y'all don't want to fucking do shit in here, the door is right the fuck there. You can get the fuck out because I don't need you here. You grown, but you want to sit up in my motherfucking house being disrespectful and be sitting here all day and didn't wash no fucking dishes. I said, I got something for y'all asses. I said, y'all don't like me when I'm the bad guy. Y'all say I'm spazzing out because I'm being a bad guy. Well, call me a motherfucker. Villain. I said, but I got something for you guys. Don't none of y'all ask me for shit. When y'all need something, don't fucking come and ask me for something. Because I can ask y'all to wash some fucking dishes and y'all don't do that shit. But the minute y'all need something from me, like a rod, a couple of dollars or whatever, y'all quick to ask me for the shit. And I'll be nice and give it to y'all. But now don't ask me for a fucking thing. I mean that shit. And I slammed the door and all his friend, why Josh was just like this. 
He wasn't even looking at me. He had to look the other way. And Wuzzle was like, he didn't know what to say. He didn't say nothing smart neither. He didn't know what the fuck to say though. Okay? And I walked the fuck off. I made my salad and I took my happy ass or my pissed off ass up the steps and I went about my business. That next morning, Tati made me some breakfast at like five o'clock in the morning. And um there was one pan and a spatula in there. He wanna wash that shit. I guess he felt like, let me just knock this out before I leave. So he went to White Josh's house and he hadn't came home for a whole day. He stayed the fuck away from me. I guess he felt like, you know what, this bitch is crazy and she's deranged. Let me tell you something. When you try to spare somebody's fucking feelings, it don't never work because then you end up having to go the fuck off, off of them. So what you need to do, Jacqueline, because unfortunately he is, maybe he is grieving and maybe you want to spare his feelings because he's grieving or whatever. And you feel like, you know, let me just spare his feelings because I know he's going through something or what have you or et cetera, et cetera, or yada, yada, yada. That's cool and all because everybody go through some shit in life. Everybody go through some shit. I get it. You know what I'm saying? How's that highlight look? But you know, bam, I'm about to use a little bit of this Oprah, which is blissful. I got this from Octly too. But you know what I'm saying? Like I was saying, sometimes, you know, I feel like he might be a little bit out of line. Let me use this fan brush that they sent me. I feel like he might be a little bit out of line because, you know, first of all, why would you ask a family member how they feel about being in a relationship with you or being a husband to you? Like what the hell gave him that notion that you was even interested in him? Is it because you just talk to him or, you know what I'm saying? Because you are just nice to him. Like what even gave him that inclination that you interested? So that's where you're going to have to nip it in the bud. You definitely gonna have to let him know, look, Paul, you don't even have to say, look, like, listen, Paul, I understand you're going through something and, you know, I'm there for you. I'll be there for you and your daughter. I'm I'm your family member, but there is no way that I'm interested in being with you. We are family members and we are friends and that's all it's going to be. And I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. However, I'm not interested in you and I just want to remain family members and friends and nothing more than that. That's it. And if he take it a certain type of way, meaning... Um, he take that shit as, you know, well, he don't want to be bothered with you or anything like that. Then you know what, Jacqueline? It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. If that's how he feel about you, then it wasn't meant to be. Point blank, period. But if he could understand that because he's a grown man, then that would be great too. But listen, if he can't understand where you're coming from, then sweetheart, it wasn't meant to be. You weren't supposed to be there or you weren't supposed to be around his ass. That's all there is to it. No more. Like, for real. Why does this side look better? You know what I'm saying? I tell people all the time, you got to stop trying to spare people's feelings all the time. Like, because people, when you try to spare their feelings, they don't understand. And like I said, I tried to spare his feelings with the whole dish thing and cleaning up after yourself and all of this shit, but... You didn't understand it. So then what did I have to do? I had to bark on her. And I don't like to I don't like to hurt anybody's feelings. Definitely not my kids. But I feel like this. I feel like you're taking advantage of me. And that's what Paul is doing to you. He's taking advantage of your kindness. So therefore, you don't have to bark on him, but you're just going to have to lay some ground rules down right then and there. Like, don't be on that shit like I was and be nice about it. Just let him know I'm not interested. Point, point blank. I'm I'm just not interested at all in you or whatever you got to offer. If you want to be his business partner, then just keep in mind, my dear, there might be some shit where he might feel like, you know, well, we business partners. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, we business partners and I really like you and et cetera, et cetera. He might feel that type of way. So you might want to have to put your foot down and put your boundaries down right then and there. So, you know, my face look a little bit dry right now to me with this all this makeup on because I just don't like so much makeup. And I feel like, I mean, I can still see my freckles, which is good. So I'm going to just use some of this, which is Slay All Day. And this is a setting spray. And I'm going to use this and show you guys. It smells so good. You, might, you would want to spray it on yourself because... It smells so good, like, and then it gives you, like, this little, this dewy look, like, but it smells so good. Could you imagine if somebody just wanted to hug you and you'd be like, oh, your face smells really good, girl. Like, peaches, honey, like, peaches. Seriously, like, peaches, okay? 
Now, I know this video, this real talk was all over the place, and I do apologize, you guys. I really, truly am sorry. I know for now, for next time, that I will never, ever be using my vlogging camera as um, to do a makeup tutorial. Because I did, you know what, or what it is, is I need to do it in the evening. Because I did do an eyelash tutorial with it, but I should have just went where I'm always at. But I just try to change it up. But you know what? I should have just been in there because I had my Christmas tree in there. But you know what it is also? I didn't want to bring all of this stuff in there with me. Like, I just didn't want to bring all of this stuff in my bedroom. Like, it's not right there. But, you know. Now I'm going to use this NYX pen on my lip, pencil, this lip liner. So, you guys, um, like I was saying, Just let him know you're not interested. So, also, like I was saying, um, if you guys um, want to be a part of Octoly, you know what I mean? If you guys want to be a part of Octoly, you have, um, I don't remember if it's two to 5,000 followers on Instagram. I will definitely post the information for you guys below. Um, I do have this Saint Laurent lipstick that I'm about to be putting on. It's in the color number 10. I can't remember what it was called, but I did get this from Octoly Till. Um, I will definitely post their information for you guys below so that you can check them out on Octoly. Um, they do have like some really, really great stuff. Now, keep in mind that everything that I get, like Saint Laurent and stuff like that, you might not see that in your store. So they're called stores. They're called free stores because you get points, credits. So I have nine credits. You start off, I think, with like five credits, either five or six. And that means you get to choose five or six things that you want to review. Now, you do have to do the reviews in like a timely manner, meaning, you know, not tomorrow when you get the stuff. But like, I think it's like 21 days or something like that. You know, if you're going over those days, it's no, it's not really a big deal. But, um, you do get points. Like some people, like like if you just started out to do it, you just started out doing YouTube videos, or not, excuse me, if you just started out being a part of Oxley, you're not going to see like um, a Saint, your Saint Laurent or Givenchy on your, in your store. You may just see things like um, Wet, um, Wet and Wild or like... Um, what kiss kiss products and stuff like that you'll see like some of the stuff that's lower end brands which is cool because i saw everybody has to start somewhere and i've started that's the stuff that i used to get too which is cool because it's free and i like all kind of free stuff so i'm not picky about anything but if you got some high-end stuff up on there your girl is going to try to get all of it okay i got like a crazy amount of stuff from them from mac saint laurent um Givenchy, um Lancome, like Estee Lauder, like stuff like that I've been getting from them. Now, would I buy a Saint Laurent makeup on my own dime? No. Okay. But I will definitely post the information for you guys below. And I hope you enjoyed this real talk and it didn't just drive you crazy because it was like all over the place. So I do apologize, like I said. So just bear with me. But, you know, you live and you learn. And I'm definitely going to do a video haul on the makeup that I've been getting because I do have a bunch of stuff that I do need to... um just show um like some avon stuff that i did get from um a young lady who used to send me avon all the time so she sent me some perfume and i'm not really sure how i feel about the scent it's the luck perfume if you guys have smelled that before let me know she sent me for him and hers not really sure how i feel about that and like nail polish you know i don't really do my nails guys unless i i, I did have my nails done but i don't do them myself but anyway so yes you guys um also i do have a new video coming out um not well every video is new but i do have a um new video coming that i'm going to probably record it today and you know it's just um it's just i'll just you'll see it and i hope you guys enjoy it it's just about you know like imitation stuff like not imitation people but like imitation like you know products or whatever like you know bags or shit like that you know and i was very inspired from and um another YouTuber that I love to watch, which is Glamazante. Um, so I went and purchased one. I was like, you know what? I'm going to share this too. I'm going to share this with everybody. You know, I think we should share stuff. So, um, because normally I buy all 
real stuff I have like most of all of the stuff mostly all of my bags are real I probably have like one imitation bag and the rest of them are all originals but I'm sorry I'm not really gonna go out and spend a whole bunch of money on a real person I can get a fake one that looks 100% real so I do have a new video coming up for that that I will be sharing with you guys so um, I'm probably gonna record it today I don't know if I want to wear this wig for it or not but yeah, I will keep you guys in tune for that. Maybe I won't record it today because I got some other stuff that I got to do. So yeah. Yes, hunties. Yes. So you guys, I love you. Stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs this video up. And I will see you guys in the soon to come video. And happy holidays. What? Yeah. Real attraction.